All right, so we're now recording. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 20th anniversary Wikimedia celebration, the 20th birthday of English Wikipedia, and by default, the birthday party of the Wikimedia movement. 20 years ago, it was begun. The Australian community is one of the most, uh, has punched above its weight since the very beginning. And Wikimedia Australia is the first, is the oldest English language country that has a chapter. Um, the UK chapter existed first, but then it closed and then reopened as a different business name. So we're actually there. We're, we're, we're the longest standing English language chapter. <laughs> uh, we'll start this with a little video from Ingrid Cumming. She sent in and then head over to, to Gangara for a, a bit of a welcome to country. So I'll just see if I can get this to work. Hi, our Wikimedia Morris. Hi, our Wikimedia Morris. All right, that was a little video from Ingrid. Gideon, did you want to, to say something? Welcome us to the show. Okay, I'd just like to welcome everyone to the 20th birthday and um, in kind of the tradition of the Indigenous Australians and the oldest people, it's, um, we should really pay our respects to the countries on which we walk and also our respect to the Wikipedians who have moved on to other things, uh, those that are around at the moment and those that will come in the future. Okay, back to you, Woody. Liam? Thanks, thanks Gideon. That's very um, kind. And and also it, it is it is important today and, and in general, but today to remember people who have been our our friends in the Wikiverse and are no longer either active in the Wikiverse or are no longer with us in general. Uh, I speak particularly of, of Craig Franklin in the Australian community, um, but there are obviously others. Uh, I don't wish to try and make a comprehensive list because that would, uh, I would definitely forget people. Um, but yeah, as, as any group that's been around for, for 20 years, there are people who, who've come and gone uh, so now is a good time to remember those who aren't anymore. The next thing on the agenda is a, a few minutes longer, a five minute video from, well, I think five minute video from, from Catherine Ma, the executive director of the Wikimedia Foundation. And I will share that um, video now and I'll mute you all as well to stop um, looped audio. Happy birthday. Happy 20 years of Wikipedia. I am so excited to be here.
Oh, well, isn't that lovely? Oh, it's a very nice little message from, from Catherine. Prue, I'd like to invite you to the stage um, to discuss some of the early Australian and New Zealand content that you found or uncovered in your research. Prue, are you there? Excellent. I am now, un I'm now unmuted. <laughs> Sorry, that's just um, just boring and classic, isn't it? Um, would be really great to um, try and get Gideon's slides on now. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll send you a new the... version that's been downscale. Okay, um, but we've also got a little bit of a quiz, so you can all get your thinking um, caps on, and we'll see who knows what what they've got. Uh, what they know already before we uh, start this and um, so what you do the way this is going to work is you find the public chat and uh, you'll be able to uh, put your answer in there as soon as you as you know it okay so this is going to start getting into uh, screen sharing let's see how that goes All right. Uh, hopefully, everyone can see the can access the the public chat. Um, if you'd like to test that by by sticking in the the location, where are you coming from today? What's where are you uh, joining us from? Oh wow, <laughs> that's good. Okay. Let's see. Is that Liam, can you tell me if you can see that? I can. I can indeed. Great. Excellent. Okay. So here we go. So we're going to go quickly because you don't need to. I know you're all fantastic researchers. Oh, and here we are. Here comes the. <laughs> we might. Here's a, this is a test one, okay, because the answer's been left on the screen. Um, so the surname of the Wikimedia Foundation's executive director rhymes with, and you'll all put. What letter in? B. B. Um, and there are citations available for each of these, but I uh, won't bother sharing those with you now. Isn't isn't the citation for that first one her Twitter biography? Yes. Well done. Oh, well, there we go. So perhaps perhaps everyone can turn their mics on and as or type in the chat uh, what, what the citation is. That's the most important part, isn't it? <laughs> So, A, B, or C, off you go. And the citations. Liam, can, I can't see the chat, so if you can tell me when, um, when I can get uh, the answer. <laughs> the, there, there have been about, there have been more than 10 uh, answers placed already, mostly A. The first any was a B. Right, any citations? Uh, no citations, one person asking for a citation. Citation needed, which that was, you'll be unsurprised to learn, Kerry Raymond, I think that's very appropriate. Uh, I agree with you, Kerry. I also would, I would contest the methodology of the question. Exactly. And um, <laughs> so I can, I can give you that article and there was no further information. So this is, um, but maybe someone can point to um, where someone could go and find more information that is, uh, has more detail. I assume they meant English Wikipedia, but I don't know. Okay, this one, I do know the answer to this So one. What, what was the official answer according to, to uh, the question? It was, it was A. A, 300,000. Another question, <laughs> um, Gangara is asking which Wikipedia, or do you mean all of them? Yeah. So no, the first person who mean... wrote A was indeed Kerry Raymond. <laughs> okay, thanks, Kerry. <laughs> This one's got to go fast because we don't have time to, don't want anyone looking it up. When was the Wikipedia article created on the English Wikipedia? 6 November 2001, 5 September 2002, 15 January 2007. So the article Wikipedia on English Wikipedia. Yep. Anyone got there yet? <laughs> We the answer is 
Go on. Yeah. The answer is A. And uh, who who added the article? The uh, amazingly, the winner of this answer then, if the answer is A, is Kerry Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> Could you take Kerry out of this competition now? <laughs> um, impressively, however, um, the yes, the the first couple of answers were would be no one suggested C. Do you have a do you have a who who is the the person who wrote it? Originally, or when Tim recovered it? Yeah, probably. And this is this was going to be the next question. Maybe uh, Tim could uh, tell us whether any of these are actually correct. <laughs> So it was Larry Sanger on in um, on the sixth of November. Okay, what is the font used in the strap line of the Wikipedia logo at the moment, according to our own documentation? All right, um, it's now a bit difficult to see which letters reply to which. Oh, yes. Letters <laughs> reply to which question because it's just a series of A, Bs, and Cs. Um, but I believe, uh, did someone say put C first? The first person to have written a C, I'm assuming they weren't responding to the previous question, uh, is Sam Wilson. No, oh, sorry, it's Robert. It's, it's Robert. <gasps> sorry, it's, it's Robert. Yeah. So A is an old answer and C is a new answer. Yeah, I, I was going to say A actually. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, where was the first Glam Wiki held? And if you were there, you can't answer that. Okay, you've got many answers on that one? Uh, yes, we do. The The first answer was from Tim Starling. <laughs> well done, <laughs> Tim. B? <laughs> Excellent. Yes, B, Australian War Memorial. <laughs> and uh, one for the New Zealanders. When did the Wiki Project NZ handle go live? On Twitter, you mean? Yes. Oh, yes, I suppose it could have been another channel. Any? Um, I, I really should insert a, a dashed line or something to, to differentiate between the previous <laughs> question and this question. I'm, I'm believing the first response here was from Kelly Toll um, suggesting C. I'm not sure if that's no. the right. No. Who's uh, the next one? The first one who suggested A after Kelly. Uh, well, then, in that case, it would be Kerry Raymond again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kerry's been uh, checking out uh, checking out the uh, answers beforehand. Okay, that's um, that's enough, I think, for that. Let's um, <laughs> unshare that <laughs> unshare that screen. How do, is that? Yeah, it has ended. Brilliant. Um, so that was yes, that was just to get you all all engaged. And now um, I will bring up some slides that Gideon has prepared. I might just have to... Um, how am I going to do this, Gideon? <laughs> oh, I just crashed the whole system. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what I'm worried about. Just go on with the next, uh, the next sure. thing. If that's the well, while, while you're setting that up, I should uh, welcome some new people who've, who've joined the chat. We're now 28 people in this call. Um, and for those who've, who joined us after the beginning, just to remind, we are recording this. So if you'd, uh, and we'll, we'll put it online afterwards. So if you'd not like to be recorded, uh, turn off your video and, and, and audio. Otherwise, welcome. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so sorry, Gideon. I'm just going to. Oh, there we go. There's That's a full right. screen. Okay, but it's. Uh, oh, it's a share screen again. Application. While so, Kerry is working on that, Tim, if you'd be willing to just to um, regale us with the story of how you recovered those early answers 
Oh, sorry, I called the bottom team while he was away from the keyboard. <laughs> Here I am. Yeah, uh, yeah. We it, people were very, very cavalier about uh, Wikipedia's archives in in the early days, and we switched from from UseMod to um, to the a, a new software, and then eventually to the one that Lee Daniel Crocker wrote, which is the one that we've got now. And the the um, only the current revisions were imported originally. And it was assumed that UseMod threw away all the old revisions, but um, I, uh, I was looking at our old SourceForge project one day, and they, they have this, uh, this file server inside there with private files. And yeah, I found in there, this was, was many years afterwards. This was, uh, yeah, my, when was, this was like 2011 or something. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I was looking in the SourceForge project and found a backup made on August 2001. Um, and uh, it had, uh, contrary to everyone's expectations, every revision from uh, from the start of the project up until August. <laughs> you did some fantastic digital archaeology there, Tim. Can you remember what was the first article, other than the main page, the first content article? Uh, yeah, I'd have to check. I I can I can tell you in a few minutes if you'd like me to. That, to that would be great. Them, please. And I, I believe the slides have, have now been work, worked. So we'll, let's let's go over the slides and, and you. I commission you to do that research in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so you can all see that you should have a make presentation full screen if you'd like to. Down in the bottom of the slides, is that showing for everybody? or otherwise up in the options, three dots down on the top right, there's also an option for make full screen. Shall I? Yep. Okay, okay, off you go. Okay, well, I've gone back and picked out some of the stuff that Wikimedia Australia has been involved with and different people around over Wikimedia Australia's time supporting the projects um, and initially you can go to the next slide please jump in with comments or anything yep. at any time um, initially when Wikimedia Australia it took us about two three years was it John that of discussions about setting up the chapter um, and it was bouncing backwards and forward. Eventually, we were formed <laughs> by a group of people down in Melbourne, and it was thanks to Angela and Tim who provided some initial funding to cover the costs of registration of the chapter and those pieces of information. Um, if you go to the next slide, please, Kerry, and you'll see that Obviously, we have kind of kept records of all the people that have um, taken up positions on the committee. So we had an interim committee. Uh, and then our first committee included our presenter, Liam, as vice president, and um, Brianna Lafter, who um, organised for all of our, our web page, our website, to be hosted on Linux service, servers. Uh, I know John was involved with a lot of that at the time of setting it up and running it. He would later become president for a few years and then um, he'd share that with Craig Franklin um, as well. And of course, Craig left us a few years ago now, um, unfortunately, but he did a lot of work um, in building and developing the community. Him and John set up the initial major funding from the foundation for us. Um, from there, it moved over to uh, the committee. Steve picked it up and we started working with it from there. That's when I joined the committee in an official capacity. Um, and we started working towards getting permanent funding under the new models with the chapter and that's where Prue and Alex have taken it on from there. If you want to go to the next slide, please. Okay, so here's a few photos from different bits and pieces. 
Um, apparently, Steve's got a tattoo with a barn star on his shoulder. Uh, there's a photo there from the first meet-up in Sydney in front of the... Um, I can't even think of the name of that bridge. Gate hanger or something. Um, Sydney Harbour Bridge. And then there's, of course, Asaf's visit to Melbourne with the New York Committee. Um, there's some photos there. There's one of Craig, one of Brianna, one of Liam, all from the um, first Glam Wiki project. And then there was um, a group from Meetup in WA back in 2007. Um, oh, Kerry's said to check out nostalgia.wikipedia.org, Wiki Australia. Um, so there's a link there to have another look. Pro, if you want to just jump to the next slide. As you can see, we've been doing a lot more stuff more recently. Um, you know, but in, early on, we started with Glam Wiki, which was the first Glam Wiki event that was organised by Liam at the War Memorial, which Kerry's quiz stole me thunder, but okay. That's all right. And then <laughs> from there, we've moved on to other stuff. You can just jump to the next slide, Kerry or uh, Kerry or Pro. Sorry. Um, oh, of course, the Glam it. Wiki. So there's some of the photos, some of the first ones, the panel. Of course, Liam, who ran the day and did such a wonderful job of it all and then went on to bigger and brighter things with the foundation. And he's come back to look after us today um, and some of the behind the scenes we we're all sitting down in the pub setting up all the paperwork and um, all the giveaway stuff for the glam wiki and then later on we picked up the QR codes you know, the priest you see at the top white ghost she managed to put the first QR code up in Sydney and then Australia's biggest project is the 2Jpedia with the QR codes and that goes through the town and its museums and stuff. So if you're ever over this way, you can spend a day there enjoying it. Yep, uh, meet up from Brisbane, another one with Craig and Kerry hiding in the background. Um, and then we got into the Wiki Loves Earth. We had over 7,000 entries over the four years that we have participated. So you'll see that there's the winners from 2.17 and 2.18, I think, just looking at the photos. And Wiki Loves Monuments, we only participated in that for three years. Um, that had substantially less entries, two and a half thousand of them. Um, and it tapered off because of some issues we have with what is defined as a monument and what isn't. So I won't go too far down that one. And of course, more recently, there's been Caddy, who truly made the chapter national when she joined us from the um, Northern Territory Library. And she also helped organise the Know My Name Editathon. Of course, there was a few of us still around from when Wikipedia was just 10 years old. And you'll notice that the oh. photos from Western Australia, that all the West Australians have been stuck in a cage at the pub for some reason. Um, there's a group from Melbourne there. And of course, Wikimedia Australia has been part of the development for ECAP, which started back in Washington in 2012. And um, ECAP's got a mascot and it's actually the little quokka from WA which Robert picked up and took across to Cape Town it then went from there it's been touring around Asia it went to Stockholm and it's currently in quarantine in Thailand it was waiting for the Bangkok um, Wikimania so hopefully it'll get out of quarantine eventually that's all the slides um, so I'll hand it back to Liam. Thank you, Gideon. That's that's a lovely rundown. Does anyone want to uh, pick up on anything they saw in those slides and, and share a, a memory or um, or add a point, add a, a story? Feel free to, to unmute yourselves and, and chime in.
in the in the absence of anyone wanting to uh, um, too shy to, to share their their story or by by audio, you can certainly add it in the, the chat and I can read it out for you. Um, yeah. uh, Gillen points out that that QR code you mentioned is still there on on the wall in the crypt. I happen to know that it is the children's chapel of the St. James Church, Sydney. And I will find the article for you and put it in the chat. Related to that fact is the, here is the, the article about the children's chapel. Related to that story is that the article about the church itself is um, the same user, White Ghost Inc., her first feature article, which was made a feature article as a wedding present for me. It was her wedding present to me, uh, on, which made it to uh, feature article status on Australia Day, um, which was my wedding day. Uh, so how's that for a very Wikimedian present? Um, Sam asked a question about the QR codes, and yes, they have been fixed. There was a period of time where it was losing um, ASCII characters out of the URL names, but that has been sorted. Excellent. Everyone likes an appropriately formatted apostrophe. Did anyone else want to um, add a little piece of history or shall we move on to Mike's presentation about uh, from New Zealand? Just a quick note, there was uh, no mention of the Paralympics as far as I could hear. Hello everyone. John, good point. Could you want to, want to give us a, a quick rundown of the of the Paralympian, the Australian Paralympian tradition on Wikimedia? Uh, it's very hard to pull it together. Um, the key component of that is was a it was oral history. There's also real history. Uh, I was working with universities, and I think it was one of the first times in Australia that we've had a wiki-based research grant application. Um, that was uh, in conjunction with University of Queensland and Paralympics Australia. I might have the name of that one wrong. Um, I think it went for two years, uh, and the objective was to collate and present more information about Paralympians in Australia and the, the disciplines involved as well. Um, I think the culmination of that project was the Paralympics of one particular year. I can't remember exactly which one. Um, we had a few people working on making it a very viable Wikipedia collation so the people who were you know, looking at these um, athletes were able to get very good uh, information about it. It spread to other countries as well. We were quite helpful to other countries that were wanting to also um, get, get on board. Um, yeah, so that was yeah. Laura Hale, um, Ross. Um, sorry, Robert. Forgetting his, yeah, forgetting Robert. His. I remember Laura, Robert, Ross. Um, yeah. All attended the Paralympics in London, yeah, and that's right. then Ross and Robert attended the Paralympics in Rio. Yeah, as with media accreditation from the Paralympic. That's right. That's enough. All right. Thank you yeah. for that. My um, apologies, John. I was rushed in doing these slides. I missed that one. No worries. Thank you for that, John. Uh, Tim, can you do, have you um, had a chance to do do that research? What, what what's the yeah. answer for it? Well, um, yeah. After the first few edits to the main page, uh, there was one to philosophy and logic. So that was really the first uh, uh, content article, if you like. You can, I think, you can see Larry's hand in that. You know, uh, you know what, what's like the root of all ontology? It must be philosophy and logic, and and so he, he put that page up with uh, uh, with uh, uh, a few uh, 
Oh yeah, he. So yeah, he he said, uh, let's work on articles on these famous philosophers: Aristotle, Plato, Epicurus, right now, Descartes, Immanuel Kant, and Ayn Rand. Oh dear. <laughs> Not sure her name should be there on the top six or so, but anyway, yeah. So that was that was the start of things: philosophy and logic. Is it not true that that uh, Larry and Jimmy met on an Ayn Rand fan message board? I can believe that. Actually, they mm. ran their own mailing list server for uh, for objectivist uh, uh, objectivists for for a while. I, they ran that out of the bomber service. Uh, yeah, so I can I can imagine that being the case. Mm. I've put put, uh, put a link into the chat for the uh, list of the first one hundred pages that were created on the English Wikipedia. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, I see in that link there, um, as as Tim said, there's homepage Wikipedia philosophy and logic. I also see with among the first uh, fifty is. The article Donegal Fiddle Tradition, <laughs> which at, which then appears again as article number one hundred, so it got deleted in the meantime. It's possibly one of the first edit wars back at the fourth notability criteria. Um, Mike, are you uh, are you there? And do you have the ability to share your slides? Um, I, I, see I think so. Up. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Let's see. What does it want me to do? Oh, so once you, if you've take, yeah, take presenter, and then you should have an extra share screen. I see it. Share Allow. screen, and you get a application or tab or whatever it is you want. I think. Here we go. Looks good. And I'll go to this. All right. <laughs> That'll look good to everyone. Yes, can and people can see? zoom it up with the full screen. Okay. Right, okay. All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the West Coast Wikipedian at large position, but we have to backpedal a wee bit because um, 2018 to 2019, I was the New Zealand Wikipedian at large. Wikipedian at large was a job title that I made up, the proclamation, um, but everyone thought it was fun. So kept it and now I think other people are talking about using it rather nice. Um, and it's a grant from Wikimedia Foundation, which I think was the first project grant to New Zealand anyone in New Zealand. I see here on the road bootling around from right down to Dunedin to Nelson, um, spending time at about thirty five different institutions in the end and about a dozen for a substantial chunk of time and just basing myself on site and working with them on their Wikimedia mass commons uploads, running workshops, doing staff training, that sort of thing. Now, it's also important to notice where I did not go island, and that is West Coast Island, uh, which we just call the West Coast, um, only other island. And it's a very distinct region. Uh, it's separated by the Southern Alps. So in a lot of its history, there was no road or rail access to it. Um, only, and there's no usable port to speak of. So it was geographically isolated, socially isolated, and one of the last parts of New Zealand to be Indians. Uh, it was only ever sparsely populated by Māori. So it's remote and uh, also retains almost all of its original forest cover as well. So there's been very, very little um, forestation and development there. Also, it rains a lot. This is the first thing you'll hear about the West Coast from any New Zealander is how much it rains. The prevailing westerlies across the Tasman Sea, the amount of rain on those mountains before they cross it out. Um, I didn't visit the West Coast for some reason um, on my years as Wikipedia at large. So only 2,000 people lived there, so it's pretty sparsculated. But at the end of the year, I did get some requests to come over and work with a couple of institutions there. So December 2019, I had a meeting in the small town of Hokitika at the library there, 
of strong budget for different organisations, Department of Constant Libraries, local government, um, tourist development, and pitched the idea of me spending some time on the West Coast as in Wicked and so the Wicked model in miniature. And uh, it took about six months to organise the funding for this, but in the end, it uh, was indeed instantiated as the West Coast Wikipedia at large. So that was just this last September and October, and it ended up being six weeks on the coast. Um, as it's, I thought this would be interesting to share because there were some things we did in this project that could be, I think, uh, directed and, and used in other such dispersed projects. So the um, this was all post COVID. We were worrying that the, the, there was going to be extensive lockdowns, and this was going to affect the ability project. But by September, the level restrictions in New Zealand at least had been reduced such that it was perfectly okay to have, uh, mass meet up events and work in public spaces and so forth, which very lucky. For the, uh, we planned a program of events, um, running workshops and the Wikipedia, ups, presentations to tourist operators, tourism operators, which was a big part of the West, uh, trying to explain to them what they think Wikipedia, the direction of things like Wikivoyage and donating tourist photos to commons and so forth. And that was my big concern was that people would take this as an opportunity to jump on Wikipedia and try and use the articles as marketing for tourism. I also met with all the glam the Gallery Library Museum Archive um, folks on the West Coast that I could and pitched the idea of working with Wikipedia and Commons um, Wikidata a bit more with them. We had a good number of participants signed up. And what was interesting with this is these volunteers um, were a substantial number from Australia and the geographically none of these active volunteers were from the West Coast, they were working in Eden, Auckland, um, Christchurch, Wellington. So we had a very graphically dispersed group of people who were all keen to help out. So to help coordinate this project, what I did was run, we ran first of all a daily progress report. So from the 5th of started, I would make a diary about what I've been doing and other folks like Will and Michael here would try their man to do and tried something, do something each day. The Afghan biscuit is an important, important part of this that we'll talk about soon. Um, and what started to happen is that we were using this as our live coordination tool for organising um, particular events. So, for example, on the 19th of September, I was in Westport and uh, Paura, who... Um, was in um, Auckland with some photographs of St. Canis's Catholic Church. Um, so I was able to run out in the evening and shoot some photos for that heritage building there. And then Canley um, was, a, was asking for the uh, heritage places that weren't documented to have no photos and Wikidata. So I was able to do that. So having someone on site but having others to find what was missing, what gaps needed to be, was really useful. And it actually stacks up. When you daily report, it really does stack up to quite a lot of stuff. Now, there the feedback from the funding organisation, Development Coast, they were amazed at the amount of stuff that we were doing and the number of different people working on it. So sometimes this is a bit obscured, but making it all in a normal Wikipedia projects, but making it all really explicit was very impressive to find familiar the collaborative nature of projects. Um, my first day, uh, I took a photograph of biscuit, the Afghan biscuit. I don't say an iconic Australian um, treat, but this is a very important part of New Zealand culture. Um, the problem with the Afghan is that traditional Afghans have an entire half walnut on the surface, not a series of pathetic fragments like this. So, of course, I nominated this as the iconic Afghan biscuit for Wikidata and made it the featured image and so forth. And um, But this prompted others to chime in as well. And we ended up um, creating an Afghan biscuit category and uh, various folks 
all went and shot either home backing or shot Afghans that they themselves had found in the field. Um, and the Afghan has now been adopted as the, I believe, the official biscuit of Wikimedia New Zealand and will be uh, part of every future um, live event that we run will be, will be done with Afghans. The second coordination thing I did was to create a virtual postcard each week that was posted to every participant's talk page. And the, so I mocked up a little stamp with the sandfly, which is the official biting insect of the West Coast and became our mascot. And just listed what we've been doing, um, thanking people who've been participating, what's coming up in the week ahead. Uh, we made a Google Drive of uh, sources that had been digitized that people could then use as references and such like. And this was also, the feedback I got was this was also a useful technique just for a short six-week project to keep people on task. And all the participant, participants at the end got this little barn star um, thank you on their talk page as well. Uh, we also had prizes for the most uh, valuable participants um, that was either the most prolific or that created the most article. Those were books or book vouchers that were donated by the sponsor of the event. So um, that was also a physical thing to be able to send out. Um, so at the end of all this, I was offered a job at Western District Library um, in Hokitika. And so I've now set up a West Coast task force project to continue picking up on all of the unfinished projects that uh, we started and there's an initial blog post that I'll share um, as I started my job in December as a full-time 18-month contract working with Western District Library. Uh, there'll be a Wikipedia theme running through all of it but I'm also doing Wikidata work on Translations of a local novel set on the West Coast. You might have heard of it. Um, there's going to be uh, Wikisource. We've started Wikisource project this time in an organised way in New Zealand, digitising out of print history books from the Western Libraries collection. And we'll be running monthly meetups now of Wikipedians in Greymouth and, and Hokitika. So this has been um, really a project. And the way anything like an organised Wikimedia project like this with coordinating dis a dispersed crew. And it, but it was a bit of a gamble to see if we could work. But what I think COVID has taught us is that these kinds of distributor projects are definitely doable. And if you run regular feedback and really work on that sense of belonging um, that is gained by thanking people regularly, making sure everyone feels you know that their contributions are being noticed, it can definitely work. So that was my experiences, and I hope that might be useful to anyone who's running a similar sort of distributed project over um, in Australia. I um, hope that my audio was not too bad. Gee, yeah, the connection here is, is not the best. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, um, thank you all, and that was great fun to present. Thank you, Mike. Um, yeah, it was a bit stuttery. The, the audio was a bit stuttery, but not so much that we couldn't work out the context through, through oh, cool. the missing okay. words. So yeah, you're all good. Thank you very much for that uh, that study. I that sorry that that work I particularly like the phrase the official biting insect of the West Coast. I know New Zealand has a bird of the year uh, program that's the uh, competition which is is hotly contested and in fact it's the most uh, the election in New Zealand that has the highest amounts of voter fraud is for the, yes. for the, but I'm not sure if there's an official biting insect of the year competition. Um, yep. Kelly, uh, are you around, Kelly Tall, and are you ready? And do you have the ability to share your slides? Uh, I can actually see my slides. I think everyone can see my slides. No, right? not, or at least I cannot. Can I others? I can see them. Yep. Yeah. Big orange slide. Ah, yes. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Well, <laughs> take it away. Um, if, if your audio starts to, to stutter, then then others, uh, we might want to take our videos off, but otherwise, we'll, um, you have the floor. Okay, great. Can everyone hear me okay? Is it all? I just checked my microphone hasn't turned itself off while I've been watching. 
Um, okay. So, oh, good. Great. Thank you so much for um, having me here to talk. I'm actually part of a bigger team um, and someone's child is very ill. So, well, not very ill, but, you know, ill that they can't manage a call tonight. And that's Heather, who I worked with on this project. Um, but I'll just take you through um, some slides that we prepared about something we've been working on with Wikimedia Australia, which is all about notability, um, using the Order of Australia as a kind of proxy of notability, and then seeing how well we can um, match that up with um, Wikipedia Australian biographies. Um, so I'll just introduce myself quickly. I'm Kelly, I'm a freelance data visualization designer and I have connections with UTS. I finished my master's there in data science a couple of years ago. Um, and I've been working with Heather, Heather Ford, who's a sociologist in the digital media and communications department at SAS at UTS. And Tamsin Petch, who's the director of uh, the Centre for Australian Public History. And um, we've also been working really closely with Prue, is Toby here? I'm not sure if Toby here. I know Alex is here. Um, so we've been working really closely with Prue, Toby, and Alex, who've um, been helping us um, with quite a lot of questions about um, the data that we've been looking at. Um, Heather and Tamsin originally came up with the project, um, which was really about understanding um, the scope of entries that related um, to Australian biographies within Wikipedia, and to sort of try and understand where some of the gaps might exist. So if we're using the Order of Australia as a proxy as well for notability, um, what pages may not be up yet on Wikipedia that we could um, learn from. Um, for the simple version, they gave me a brief, which was, we're gonna give you, you know, we'll just get a list of names and then we'll extract them from Wikipedia. <laughs> and um, if there's a match, we'll just then get the page creation date and then we'll just calculate the difference in time to understand what people's pages put up before they got their Order of Australia or after they got their Order of Australia. Which um, I was like, yeah, that sounds really easy. Um, <laughs> dear God, <laughs> it was not easy. Um, I, we want to start off with just really acknowledging that the the, the honours list itself um, has a lot of issues with it. Um, it's incredibly biased. We know that. I think um, I think the last year they got up to forty one percent of women who were not who received an award. Um, but it that that's kind of only doubled really. Um, and there's the um, Honor of Women group have done an incredible job at actually getting that up to even 41%, but they know that they could go even further. Um, we also don't know the extent of, um, I guess, people's racial background, um, the full gender spectrum. Um, we just sort of know we've got a really blunt instrument in understanding whether it's a man or a woman who has the award. Um, and we use that list to match names with Wikidata, not Wikimedia first because you know names are really hard to match. Um, I didn't know that, um, I mean, we missed Bert Newton in the first um, sweep because he's listed as Alfred Newton, not, or sorry, Albert Newton, not Bert Newton. And we missed Jenny Key because she's Miss Jennifer Margaret Key. So there's lots of people that we missed in that first um, uh, kind of matching that we tried to do. So when we were talking to Alex and Prue, Alex used it as a sort of an opportunity, which he sort of madly worked in one, over one weekend, which was to extract all of the um, records that he could find on Wikipedia to update everyone's Wikidata entry. So now we know that we've got a really great um, solid data set in Wikidata of all the Order of Australia recipients. Um, getting the page date creation was also a little bit tricky. I had a very hacky way of going about it, which I can share with someone later on if they're really interested in it. Um, it was long and slow and arduous, but it did work. I managed to get the page creation date. Um, and then it was mostly smooth sailing after that. So I'll just take you through quickly. I'm not sure. I know that um, uh, some people have been working on um, creating pages for uh, people who have an order. But just to give people a quick rundown of um, the different levels and when we're talking about notability, um, the knights and dames kind of disappeared in 83 and everyone probably remembers that weird moment when um, Tony Abbott brought them back in and gave one to um, the Duke of Edinburgh. And interestingly, there's only 19 Australian knights and dames and one of them is held by the Duke of Edinburgh and the other one is held by Prince Charles. So that's sort of like already a quite large proportion of them are held by the royal family. Um, so the highest level um, of honours that Australia has right now is a companion, an AC. 
Um, and they're sort of sort of they, they're eminent. And then the AO, the officer, is awarded for distinguished service. An AM is um, sort of awarded for a service in a particular locality or field. And the medal, which is an OAM, is, is awarded to more people who are involved very much in grassroots community level. Um, so they're sort of the, uh, the CW, you see lots of people popping up from the CWA, um, surf lifesaving, rotary. So it's kind of quite grassroots. But that doesn't mean that there isn't still, I think Penelope Seidler has an OAM. So there's still some sort of interesting people mixed in with the OAM who might be considered sort of notable from a, a Wikipedia measure of notability as well. Um, so the key findings were that um, we've got about 11% of people who hold an order who have a page on Wikipedia. There's this sort of interesting crossover, which I think is kind of, so we've got these 4,452 people out of the, I think it's 41,000 people who have an order. And then Alex kindly sent me um, an estimate of how many Australian biographies um, we think that are there, which are around 53,000. So there's sort of like this interesting, but possibly small group of people, 4,452. Um, so there's still a lot of um, people who have an order that don't have a Wikipedia page yet. Um, interestingly, the higher the level of the order, um, oh, I'm just seeing like 32 on public chat. Does that mean no one can hear me? Hang on. We can hear okay. Sorry, I just saw 32 and I was like, oh my God, is everyone saying, I can't see your slides, I can't hear you. Okay, so um, so what we can find is that the higher the level of the Order of Australia, um, you know, this isn't so surprising, the more likely you are to have a Wikipedia page. Um, but in that officer and member level, we've still got 11,000 people who are missing um, from Wikipedia. And they're people who are sort of still quite eminent and still very notable. So you can see here that, uh, sort of a little bit small, but if you've got your big screen on, I'm just going to make it full screen so I can see. Um, we've got, um, you know, 100%, there are only 19 knights and dames, so a lot of those are Governor Generals of Australia, so they tend to get a page as well. Um, but we've got 85% of people who are ACs have a page, and then it significantly drops down. So people who are an AO, or people who um, are in the lower level, um, that green box is the proportion who have a Wikipedia page. But what is really interesting, and we were quite surprised, is to see that the representation of women as a proportion, not obviously in absolute numbers, is actually comparable to men. So you see here, there's about 10% of all women who have an Order of Australia um, are represented in Wikipedia, compared to about 11% of men. So even though the, the proportionally um, they're not comparable, but sorry, raw numbers are not comparable, but proportionally they are. So there's actually a relatively strong representation of uh, women who hold Orders of Australia on Wikipedia. And when we look at the actual levels, again, 100% of those knights and dames, um, but AC, companion level, like it's close to 100% of uh, Australian women who hold ACs have representation on Wikipedia. Um, a little bit more than the men, which is interesting. Um, but when we jump to the AO level, which is still very notable, you know, like it's quite tough to get an AC, but AO, still tough <laughs> to get one. Um, there's quotas around those. I think there's only about 100 a year, 100 people who are allowed to get one a year. Um, it drops down to half. So there's still a lot of people that um, might do with a Wikipedia page um, at that OA, sorry, at the AO and um, AM level. Um, we wanted to understand: um, Does the announcement of um, uh, getting receiving a, a, an honour prompt Wikipedians to jump online and create pages for people? Um, when you look at the split between people who have pages created before they get their award and the split of people who have pages created after they get their award, it's nearly 50-50. But when we look at sort of page averages, what I did was I made everyone, the date that they got their award is week zero, and then calculated the distance in time um, after the page was created and before their page was created. So you can see here, this is week zero. So it's um, day zero plus six days. 
We have 47 pages, like in total, over time, creating a page. And a little bit of activity before, but it kind of averages about one or two pages a week are created for people who have an order of Australia. Um, we did a data dump of who these people were to try and understand who created the page. <laughs> and <laughs> Alex created <laughs> quite a lot of these pages. Um, and he said, you know, I, 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 I read the announcement, I jump online and say, wow, that's an interesting um, astrophysicist that probably should have a, a Wikipedia page. So I'll create, create a page for them if I can find information. So it definitely appears to be a signal for people to sort of jump online and go, oh, this looks like an Australian that should have a page and doesn't have a page already. Um, so we did like lots of deep dive analysis and gender and splits and things like that. And it was kind of interesting, but it didn't feel necessarily very actionable other than um, get everyone to look at the news on you know, the 26th of January or the Queen's birthday long weekend to see who gets nominated. So um, we decided to look at the citation field. So every time anyone gets nominated, they publish the kind of reason. So I just did some pretty simple text analysis. Um, I was gonna do some topic modeling, but I've just looked at really term frequencies try and understand, um, particularly amongst women, what are the differences between women who have a Wikipedia page created for them and women who don't have a Wikipedia page created for them. And so women who have Wikipedia pages and an honour are more likely to be in sport, in politics, or in media and entertainment. And the women who don't are more likely to be in research fields like nursing, community health, aged care, paediatrics, so sort of um, kind of feminized sort of industries. Um, I keep hitting my keyboard. Now this is tiny, what if I go full screen here? No, I am full screen. Um, Prue's got all these slides, so you can have a look at them. But the bottom, the bottom section here are people who've been awarded an AO um, who don't have a Wikipedia page and anyone above the line uh, people who have an AO and have got a Wikipedia page. So we can here see sport, parliament, um, there's lots of lawyers, um, kind of science, lots of dates here that tend to relate to Olympic events. When I looked at um, inverse term frequency, so the, fre the frequency of terms that are very unique to each group, gold appeared significantly here. So there's obviously lots of gold medalists to do with the Olympics. But here we get, we see nursing, we see child, um, there's lots of um, kind of healthcare related sort of people in those fields who don't have a Wikipedia page. And that's similar for people with, uh, who are members. Again, this is kind of entertainment, broadcasting, and here there's a lot more sort of nursing, aged care, um, children. Um, so these are, these are actually still quite important uh, and notable women. Um, but they're not necessarily being recognised by Wikipedia. Um, the same difference emerged, I was interested in, well, of all the women who got a page before they got their order, what are they known for versus people who get their order after, sorry, people who get their page after they get an order. And it seems like it's a, actually a great signal for um, more Wikipedia pages to be created for people. So. Uh, an Order of Australia seems to be quite a strong notability flag um, for pages to be created. So this side of the line, these are people who had their page created before they received their honour. And up here is people who um, had their page created after they got their honour. And again, there's nursing, um, disability, culture, and over here, it's sort of broadcasting, um, I'm using my tiny laptop, judiciary, parliament, performing. So it does seem like after um, people get an award for um, with a citation that relates to things like nursing research, et cetera, they actually are more likely, they, they tend to get an award, they, sorry, they tend to get a page created for them after as well. So it does seem to be a really good signal. Um, but I guess the opportunity, um, one thing we did notice whether there were 280 people who have a wiki data entry um, who have an order of Australia but have no Wikipedia page. So obviously not all of those people um, are worthy of a Wikipedia page themselves, but we found a couple of people 
Um, so we found, um, you know, people like um, Dr. Megan Jane Johnson. Um, she uh, specialises in nursing, nursing and healthcare ethics, and her research is actually referencing Wikipedia. I think it's the page on amora amorality. So um, she's talking about the. Uh, she has a chapter around ethics, and her work is actually cited in a Wikipedia page, but she has no Wikipedia page herself. Um, Dr. Lynn Frager is really important in rural healthcare policy and um, safety. She's developed lots of policies um, that have been adopted by farmers for safety. She's actually listed on the Women in Red page, but she has no Wikipedia page yet. And Professor Ingrid Winship, um, Winship she um, works in genetics. And one of her genetic observations that kind of uncovered a particular genetic mutation um, it's actually used in the page of the genetic mutation, so her research is quoted, but she doesn't have a Wikipedia page either. So they're just some of the people that we discovered in this interesting world of being referenced, but not then having a page. And all these women also hold um, Order of Australia's as well. Their offices of Order of Australia. They have an office. They are officers of the Order of Australia. Um, you see other opportunities because we did find um, that. Uh, women working in fields of uh, nursing research, community health, aged care, might be good to do outreach for some of the universities, such as the University of Newcastle, which I think has a really strong faculty in public health, um, or nurses' unions. My mum commented that nurses are probably too busy to make Wikipedia pages, <laughs> which is probably true, because um, I was talking about them being underrepresented, and she sort of said, well, that's because nurses are too busy because she used to be a nurse. Um, but it could be a really great, um, I guess, a, a, a focus or a, a group of people that might um, be great to do outreach with, community outreach with, to sort of say, hey, you've got a whole bunch of eminent people working in this field and we know that they deserve a Wikipedia page. Can you help us put them up? And I guess the other opportunity that we discovered was kind of people like me. Um, I have a Master's of Data Science for UTS. I know universities are always looking for massive data sets for their students to play with. Um, I kind of knew about Wikipedia as a Wikipedia user, but I didn't necessarily understand the extent and how much data you can access, um, particularly text-based data, which we're all trying to get our hands on. Um, now, you know, it's a kind of um, world that you don't really know exists until you get some kind of weird um, secret entry into. Um, and I was only able to access this through a very specific and special opportunity, but it seems like there's um, you know, I've been telling people about it who I work with in data science and they're like, oh my God, I never knew that, um, you know, such things existed. And the fact that, um, you know, a lot of us use R or Python, there's lots of packages that we can access this, uh, the Wikidata API with that I didn't really know about before either. So I just see that it's going very dark in Marrickville. There's a beautiful sunset outside. Um, yeah, that's the research we've been doing. Um, happy birthday. Thanks for having me. And um, yeah, it was a wonderful opportunity. So thank you very much, Prue and Alex, for getting us involved in this. Thank you very much, Kelly. That's fantastic. Really interesting work. And, and unsurprisingly, considering your expertise, really clear and informative um, data visualizations as well. Thanks. <laughs> If I may um, add a New Zealand side to the story, um, uh, th that was really impressive, Kelly. Uh, thanks for that. And uh, I, I spotted uh, some time ago the living Australian um, um, knights and dames uh, um, list, and I thought, oh, we should have something um, like that in New, in New Zealand, of course, you know. And uh, your Australian list, as you've just explained, is actually quite short. I had no idea that we, we would find hundreds of living knights and dames in New Zealand. It took us weeks, several of us were working on this, uh, to put this list together. It was a massive amount of work. So uh, not happy. I think, I think that's because uh, New Zealand still follow, follows the imperial system. But in 1975, yeah. we got our own system. So we gave yeah. one to Prince Charles to say thank you. Yeah, so I got I got conned. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be easy, and then it, it never is. <laughs> Wasn't. Excellent. 
um, I think now on the schedule, we, we're a bit late, but that's fine. I'm, uh, we're, at least I'm not going anywhere, so <laughs> hopefully no one else is, is, is worried about the time. Next up on the, on the schedule is Caddy. Um, do you have your, um, would you like me to show the video from mine or are you able to share it from your end, Caddy? Uh, I might share it from my end. Hi, can you oh, all hear me? Yes. Amazing. Hello, everyone. I can't think of a more lovely way to spend a Friday evening than with you all. And so many familiar faces, but already so many names, so many names as well that I've heard of, but have never met or have heard stories about and never been on a call with. So it's super lovely to all be here together. Um, yes, yeah, so if you don't know me, hi, I'm Caddy Brain. I'm uh, here on Awabakal and Waramai country uh, in Newcastle at the moment, but I'm only recently back on the, new, on the East Coast after nearly 10 years in the Northern Territory. Uh, that's what took me to Wikipedia editing. Uh, I have a background in journalism and it was just amazed at how difficult it was to find any sort of basic background information on basically anything in the Northern Territory and that really motivated me to try and do something about it and work with people to tell their own stories as opposed to telling them for people and to empower communities to do that. Um, and so I'm forever grateful to Wikipedia and Wikimedia Australia for supporting um, those endeavours over the years. So I did a really wild, I'm going to share my screen now. Um, yes. Here we go. A wild trip uh, from Darwin down to Alice Springs with my historian friend here, Darren Archibald. Um, Gideon and Robert trained us in Wikipedia, um, very basic skills in Wikipedia before we took this trip. And we did the first ever edit-a-thon in Tennant Creek, something I'm very proud of, and also in Alice and Catherine and Darwin. And I think we ended up doing about 20 or 30 events um, over a few years and managed to double the number of MT pages in that time. So, yeah, here's the editathon in Tennant Creek with some locals who are Tennant Creek history, quite frankly. But my um, job this evening, I had the very uh, pleasurable task of putting together a video. I think uh, videos were contributed from around the world to celebrate uh, Wikipedia's uh, 20th birthday. Here we are. And so it's my great pleasure to launch this video. Um, I will show it to you now. Probably many of you might have seen it on social media today. But we tried um, as a committee, I suppose, as we put this together to get a wide but very quick. So here was the task. Summarise activities in Australia in one minute. Easy. No, it was actually quite tricky. But um, we wanted to get a nice smattering, I suppose, of the diversity of activities um, that Wikipedia and Wikipedians um, partake in. So in this video, you will see uh, some references to some uh, amazing content that's very Australian. Tim Tams are mentioned, the Quokka is mentioned, Australia's big things are mentioned. I had a great time looking up unusual articles from Australia and stuff like that to get some inspiration. Of course, Noongarpedia, which is the Noongar um, incubator uh, for Noongar content on Wikipedia, which is just something um, Australia in particular is just so incredibly proud of. It's to such an achievement in terms of um, the movement. Uh, the contribution that so many of you make to improving content about marginalised groups and in particular women through Women in Red, Art and Feminism and of course more recent things like Know My Name, Glam Wiki and the strength of partnerships that have got us to where we are today, uh, photography and the power of great images and commons to kind of document our world and share it, events that we've done far and wide, um, and of course, some lighter moments too. So without further ado, I am going to play you the Wikimedia Australia's 20th birthday card, I'm calling it, it's like a video card.
So that's a big happy birthday to Wikipedia from us all here in Australia. Just very quickly, um, the video was made screen, I hand drew, drew every slide um, and this is just to show you how it was done. Uh, most all the images were taken from Wikimedia Commons and different content on Wikipedia. Um, we wanted it to be short, snappy, fun to see, but also to show, I suppose, the intimacy of Wikipedia. It looks like a big, scary platform, but as we all know, below the surface is this incredible, warm community, this incredible friendship and this incredible generosity of time and spirit that underpins the entire movement. So we wanted to make it intimate, I suppose, show diversity. Um, was going to put some music under it, but for some reason, the kind of silence and just the typing for mine really like captured the experience of what it is to edit on Wikipedia. It's so often a big community activity, but it's also very much a, um, you know, also a very solo activity at times. So that was sort of the feeling of it. Um, but lastly, we wanted it to be honest that there are still so many different things that we're trying to address when it comes to bias, when it comes to, you know, some of the more complex things around sharing, you know, traditional knowledge or different issues like that that we're yet to face and yet to resolve and work with um, partners to, to, I guess, to, to deepen those conversations that I'm sure we'll continue to do. But, yeah, big happy birthday to Wikipedia um, and to all of you and big thanks to all of you because I continue to learn from you all. We all learn from each other. It's such an incredible privilege. Our work is never done, so here's to 20 years more. That's lovely, Katie. Thank you. Very pretty. Uh, I hope that video gets picked up and used inside other slideshows and, and presentations as well in, in montages of, of 20th birthday presents and animated cards from around the world. We've always, uh, I think we've always punched above our weight as a, as a national community in the Wikiverse. Uh, Alex, are you there? I believe it is now chance. Uh, now I would hand you the microphone to to sing us out, as it were. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, I just want to get a couple of thank yous out there. Um, thank you, Liam, so much for your your um, wonderful emceeing and uh, and uh, you know sort of keeping us all. Uh, somewhat to time. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you. You've been a marvellous uh, presenter uh, of uh, today's uh, events. Gone uh, really well. Um, thanks to all our speakers. Uh, thanks, thanks, Kenny, for that amazing video. I, uh, I was uh, you know, so relieved and then I watched it and I was like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> and, and an amazing job and great to see the behind the scenes um, um, uh, you know, video. <laughs> um, and, and uh, director's commentary, uh, Kelly. Thank you for your your wonderful work on um, on and, and that, that presentation. As Liam said, it's a, a great, you know, really amazing kind of visualization. And 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 you know, those of us, um, Annie and myself, who are you know, in particular, who are interested in you know, really interested in the honours and the gender gap. Um, you know, it's just amazing to see to see you know to see it all laid out like that. Um, thanks to Mike. Um, in um, Aotearoa, New Zealand, um, for his um, amazing work on that West Coast. I found that West Coast project really inspiring, um, and you know that was. And I'm so glad he could share that with us. It's a, it's a really um, great model for um, for you know a, a space engaging with uh, regional um, places in in, in 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 New Zealand or Australia. Um, uh, thanks to Catherine Ma, um, executive director of the foundation. Uh, um, for her video greeting, and thank you to Ingrid. Uh, thanks for thanks to Gideon for that excellent uh, recap of history, uh, and uh, and Tim uh, for, for some of the uh, the technical aspects of that. Um, uh, particular thanks to Prue um, who who stepped in and and did a lot of the organisation for this event. Um, I had uh, I was uh, you know intended to do a lot more, but uh, found myself uh, incredibly. Um, Incredibly, incredibly busy at work, and uh, and Prue and the rest of the the Wikimedia Australia committee, um, you know, really stepped in and and uh, uh, you know did a fantastic job organising what I'm sure you will all agree will be a was a, a really enjoyable and um, in, informative uh, event, and it's great to see all 
for your place this year, which brings me to my my last uh, thank you. Uh, I just want to thank the the amazing communities, um, of course, the global uh, Wikimedia community, but uh, in particular the the um, incredible communities we have uh, in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and and in Australia, um, who you know work really well together to to produce you know this incredible content and to to um, produce free knowledge um, and open source data for for um, the whole world. As uh, as uh, Kathy said, you know that. Some of the data that's you know being produced on Wikidata and, and in Wikipedia, you know, is will is um, will um, be amazing to be used for researchers for, for years or another twenty years to come, or uh, well, you know, for decades. Um, yeah, so yeah, I want to thank the yeah, the amazing communities we have um, um, in uh, um, Australia and um, Ontario and New Zealand. Um, I remember when I first created a Wikipedia account in. Uh, way back in 2005 and you know thinking um, yeah how, how how does this work it must be absolute anarchy and, and, and now I know the answer to that it's, <laughs> it's not absolute anarchy because we have these amazing communities um, who work together um, with each other and, and, uh, internally. and uh, so I just want to thank everyone um, everyone here um, and everyone who's not here who has uh, been uh, who has contributed and helped create these incredible projects uh, over the years um, so that's the thank yous out of the way. Um, there's a few more events coming up um, that I'll, um, I'll see if I can send to you. Um, so if you, uh, so what it's uh, 8.30 in uh, the east coast of Australia now, uh, 10.30 in um, New Zealand and 5.30 in Western Australia. Um, so we've got a, just post them in the chat. There's a, uh, the Wikimedia Foundation is running a, a global event. It will be on YouTube. Um, I've posted the link there. Um, so that's at uh, 3 a.m. Uh, East Australia time. That will be um, midnight in Western Australia and I know, <laughs> and uh, 5 a.m. in uh, New Zealand. So that's uh, uh, that's tonight if uh, you, know, you want to stay up a couple of hours longer. Let's see. We've also got a, a Asia Pacific event coming up. Oh yes, uh, yeah, um, uh, we've got an Asia Pacific event coming up. That's once again that'll be on YouTube. Um, uh, so there'll be so, several members of um, uh, of people in the uh, Asia Pacific region. Uh, I'll be there, um, and there'll be um, plenty of other people that'll be um, run on YouTube. And and uh, uh, so that's at uh, 11 p.m. Uh, on Saturday in Australia. Uh, so that's, let's see. Uh, 1 a.m. in New Zealand, uh, 8 <laughs> 8 p.m. in uh, in Western Australia. And lastly, on Sunday, for those of you in in um, Western Australia, there is a Perth meetup, another nice round number, um, Perth meetup 70. I'm just trying to get that link. There you go, Perth meeting meetup number 70. Um, and also, um, I think one link, one ref is starting today. Am I right? Uh, or started or yesterday? Or, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's um, if uh, you can help our, our wonderful librarians there, um, and all those other um, wonderful uh, organisations we partner with and, and work with and help out. Um, okay, so yeah, once again, thank you all for coming. Um, thank you all for your, all your work over the years and uh, I hope you had a great time today and I hope to hope some, um, to see you at some of the other events and as I said uh, happy birthday Wikipedia and, um, and here's to another 20 years and, and more. <laughs> thanks, thanks Liam. Thanks Alex. All right and I think with that we'll uh, we'll sign off the conclude the, the formal or informal uh, meeting and anyone who wishes to hang around and chat, uh, you're very welcome to and I'll turn off the recording now.